Hi, just before we start uh, our morning service this morning, I just wanted to give you a couple of announcements. This evening, we'd like to encourage you to join us at quarter past six to quarter past seven with the rest of the Apostolic Church nationwide and across Europe as we pray. And then at half past seven, we'd like you to join us for the next uh, next uh, conference that's being hosted by Dom and Lou. Uh, so please join us at quarter past six and then again at half past seven. Details will be posted on Facebook for both of the sessions. Thank you very much. Good morning. Welcome to Small Farm Community Church Digital Service this morning. Uh, this is Linda and I'm Tim and we are part of the leadership team and we lead particularly the, the food bank part of our church. This morning is a special Sunday. Uh, every Sunday is special, yes, but this is a special Sunday as it's the first Sunday in Advent and we can officially say it's the countdown to Christmas. And we just want to think about this morning, we're going to pause. We're just going to pray and we're just going to think about this time that it'll be a time of peace. It'll be a time when we can just come together. Although we may not be able to come, all come together, but we'll be able to come together at some time as, a, as family members. But it'll be a time where we just celebrate the fact that Jesus Christ came for us. So I'm just going to ask Linda just to pray and we'll just pause now. Father, we just want to thank you that we've got this time to come together and to worship you although not in in the physical sense but over the online world wide web but lord we do just want to thank you and to praise you for everything that you do for us but lord we do think of those at, at this time that may be going through difficult times so we just pray for peace within their lives we just pray lord that you'll just just be with them just gather yourself around them lord let them know your love and your peace at this time of christmas amen amen so we've got uh, Paul Howells, Pastor Paul Howells is speaking this morning. His theme is destiny, covering quite a, a wide remit. He's going to look how God was foretold, Jesus was foretold in the Old Testament from uh, Genesis right through the Old Testament and through uh, the New Testament as well up to Revelation. So Paul will be speaking a bit later on. We're going to have a, a Bible reading. Linda's going to read for us in a few minutes from Luke chapter 1. Uh, but before we have that Bible reading, we're going to listen to a song and we're going to share what a beautiful name. I was thinking about that verse. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And Hillsong have produced a lovely song, What a Beautiful Name. So we're going to share that song and we're going to just worship the Lord for, for who he is and what he has done in our lives. You were the word at the beginning One with God, the Lord most high Your hidden glory in creation Now revealed in you our Christ What a beautiful name it is
Linda to read uh, Luke chapter 1 verses 26 to 38. Just before I do that, um, just something that I picked up on Facebook this week, it does come in handy for some things, and that is that the actual book of Luke has 24 chapters. So if you start on December the 1st and read a chapter a day, by the time you get to Christmas Eve, you'll have read all about Jesus, all about his birth, his death, and the miracles that he performed. So like Tim said, the reading is from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. The birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was set to be unable to conceive is now in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. 
I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be, be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Amen. So Mary was challenged for the situation and she fulfilled the commission and she was a willing servant. So it's the first of Advent. As sh we're not actually recording this on the first of Advent. We're recording it a few days before. But we sent out a message through, through the email system asking for pictures of either your decorations. I must confess we haven't put our decorations up yet. Um, we have put some pictures in of when Luna helped us last year with our decorations. Uh, but we've asked for people to send in the pictures of, of, our, of decorations either in their own home or around the streets where we live in Whitwood. There's many lights that have been put up already. Very eager beavers. Oh, it's too early though, Far too. too early. Far too early. We're very traditional. We put our decorations up. Not even the first. <laughs> <laughs> Not even the first of December. We probably push it on a little bit. But I know there are people there out there um, in the church who love putting their decorations up, and uh, we just thought we'd be have a bit of fun to show some pictures now. So we're going to ask for them to be the show. <laughs> Some nice pictures there, some uh, unusual pictures, and uh, I'm sure maybe when uh, when you put your tree up, if you want to send some more pictures in over the weeks that lie ahead, we can have some more fun again. So I'm going to hand over the, the service uh, to Paul now. He's going to speak about destiny and about what uh, this first part part of our Advent means. So over to Paul now. Hi everyone, welcome. Uh, it's so good to be with you again and uh, to share God's word today. And uh, today we start a new series uh, as we celebrate the time of Advent. And uh, for the next four Sundays, we'll be looking at various aspects of the Christmas narrative. And uh, I love the season of Advent. It's, a, it's designed to be a journey, of course, from the edge into the centre, to take us slowly right into the heart of Christmas and, and the arrival of Jesus, God's great intervention uh, on earth. And uh, whenever we speak about Advent, we'll, we'll, we'll always use words like hope and peace and joy and goodness, uh, etc. So it's a great season to, uh, to to get involved in and um, and I trust over these next four weeks you will experience something of God's presence uh, and God speaking to you personally through these Advent messages. And uh, I'd like us to look this morning at one little phrase taken from the Gospel of Luke chapter 1 um, and it's the announcement, it's part of the announcement that the angel Gabriel makes to Mary. There was a raft of things that the angel said to Mary about the child that she would bring into the world. And uh, if you go to verse 32 of chapter 1, the first four words of that verse say this. He, speaking about Jesus, shall be great. He shall be great. Last week, I went online to look at, for some ideas for Christmas presents for some uh, members of our family. And uh, I went on the Amazon UK website 
and um, I went into the book section. I mean, there, I should say there are other credible book selling outlets as well. Uh, but I went on the book section of Amazon and then went into the Christian book department and uh, narrowed it down even more by putting in the name Jesus. And uh, as you can imagine, there were hundreds and hundreds of books about Jesus on this Christian website. And uh, Jesus the man, Jesus the child, uh, Jesus the leader, Jesus the servant, the king, the master, the teacher, etc. And, uh, but I guess, you know, the greatest book of all that we could read, uh, if we want to know more about Jesus, which I, I assume we do, uh, is, of course, the Bible. That tells us everything we know. There's nothing that can be added to this. We, this is the complete revelation that we have uh, of Jesus. And when we talk about Jesus and greatness, uh, then that, this book tells us everything we need to know about how great Jesus actually is. So the Bible tells us everything we need to know. The Old Testament, of course, points us forward to Jesus. If you, if you started to read from Genesis and went right through to Malachi, the whole 39 books, you would find something of the promised Messiah in virtually every one of those books. You know, when Jesus was on earth and uh, he had uh, one incident that's recorded for us in John's Gospel, where he had a run-in with the religious leaders. Of course, that was pretty common, that he would have a run-in with the religious teachers of the day. And uh, they questioned him on this occasion about his identity and his mission. And Jesus turned to them and basically said, search the scriptures, because he knew they placed great value on the Hebrew scriptures. So he says, search the scriptures. And he says, they will testify of me. They will, they will point forward to me. They will bear witness to me. And uh, that was the answer that Jesus gave them. Go and search it out. You'll see that the Old Testament points to this day. It points to my arrival. If you go to the other end of Luke, we've read this morning from chapter 1. If you went to the last chapter of Luke, Jesus has died and has risen again. And it's Easter Sunday. And uh, he joins two people who were walking away from Jerusalem, pretty despondent, pretty downbeat. Because for them, they thought the cross was the end. They thought that it had all collapsed. And uh, it was great while it lasted, but that was it. And uh, so they're pretty despondent and they, they're walking away, walking from Jerusalem, the centre, and they're on the road to Emmaus. And uh, Luke describes the event for us and he says that Jesus joins them on their journey. And uh, of course, initially, he's a stranger to them uh, and he listens in to their conversation and they didn't know him. And, uh, and then Jesus begins to teach them. So they have a Bible study on the go and uh, he begins to open up the Old Testament to them. And it says, beginning at Moses and taking them right through the prophets, he points to the scriptures that refer to him, that pointed to him. And uh, as we go through that narrative, it came to a point where Luke says, and they knew him. Hmm? Their eyes were opened. As Jesus showed what the Old Testament said about him. And, uh, and as we go through the Old Testament, you know, we see, we, 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 we see facets of the, the prophecies that relate to Jesus. Over hundreds, hundreds of prophecies were fulfilled at the first coming of Jesus. Prophecies that were given hundreds of years before, 500 years, 700 years, even further back than that. And so we thank God for God's word and, and the Old Testament pointing forward to the arrival of Jesus. And of course, when we come to the New Testament, there was a 400 year gap, of course, between Malachi and Matthew, a period of silence. And then and then we have the arrival of Jesus. And so the, the Gospels begin with the arrival of Jesus and they tell us about his birth, his life, his death, his resurrection, his ascension. Um, and then, of course, the, 
some of the, uh, the, the New Testament after the Gospels then, they reflect on that, but they also point us forward to another coming, uh, which of course is the second coming of Jesus. And we're all excited about that. And, and even now, as we're in a season of Advent, as we reflect and rejoice on what, what has been, what, what Christ did for us, and what was accomplished through his life and death, we look forward as well. That is part of our hope, that we look forward in, in anticipation that this great Saviour will come again. The one who came to save us will come again for us and uh, take us to be with himself. You know, Christmas is all about journeys, isn't it? In normal times, we would be, uh, some of us would be traveling the motorways or jumping on trains or buses or even going to airports and catching flights to various parts of Europe or beyond um, to maybe meet up with family members. And of course, all that is severely restricted. And... Uh, uh, but at the, during the first Christmas narrative, there were still some important journeys. Of course, there was the important journey of Mary and Joseph, and they arrived at Bethlehem. And that wasn't by accident, that was by design, of course. God had pinpointed that place. Uh, he didn't choose the grand city of Jerusalem, but it was the obscure little town, village of Bethlehem. And they found their way into Bethlehem, and then... There was no room at the inn, of course, and they found their way into a, a back stable. And then there's the long journey of the wise men following the star from the east and bringing gifts to Jesus. Then there's the relatively short journey of the shepherds uh, from just from the hillside overlooking Bethlehem. But of course, the greatest journey of all, which takes us right to the heart of Christmas, is the journey of Jesus from heaven to earth, from coming to this earth and, and, and being part of, of, of God's redemptive process, being the instrument to fulfil the redemptive mission that was in the heart of the Father. It says God sent forth his Son in the fullness of time. I love the way Paul describes it in Philippians 2 where he talks about Jesus having equal status with God but laying that aside and humbling himself and becoming obedient to death even the death of the cross and we see that great descent of Jesus from the throne of God right down into a into a back street manger and then of course it turns up Paul turns it again on its head and says because of that because of the obedience, therefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name. So the, the amazing journey of Jesus, stepping out from heaven, breaking into time, God dividing time into AD and, uh, AD and BC, God dividing it into uh, this supreme intervention that the Old Testament had pointed forward arrives uh, and Jesus is born and God's redemptive plan is set into into motion of course it was a plan Bethlehem was not an afterthought it was a plan of course that was there before the foundation of the world before any human beings were born uh, God put in place a plan because he knew they would fall he knew they would sin and so the plan was prepared before they were even born staggering as that is uh, and uh, so God had a timeline that he was working to and uh, of course there was preparation in the palace in heaven there was preparation through the prophetic but there was preparation in Palestine as well because this great plan that God had needed to engage with somebody on earth uh, so this plan that was conceived in the heart of the father comes escalating comes sweeping down to earth and of course it engages with a young teenage girl named Mary and uh, heaven touches earth and uh, Mary of course found finds favor with God and the angel begins to speak to her and outline that the plan of God and 
and tells her that she will be found with a child, a baby boy, his name will be Jesus. And all those things that, that you know, were, were, were staggering revelation that the angel brings to this teenage girl. And um, of course, in the same chapter one as well, Luke chapter one, you'll find there's another miraculous birth. And, um, and the angel, of course, that spoke to Mary also spoke to a, a gentleman called Zachariah. And uh, he was the father of John the Baptist, you remember. And, um, and John the Baptist's birth was miraculous in many ways. And, and then, of course, the, the angel then speaks to Mary. And um, it's, it's important that Gabriel, this, this high-ranking angel, is the one that's asked to deliver the message. He brings the breaking news. He's the one that's got this message of huge importance. And he's the one that goes to Zachariah and he goes to, he comes to Mary and tells her that she will give birth to a child, uh, a baby boy. And, uh, you know, it, there, there's no ultrasound scan here. There's no visit to the antenatal clinic. There's no doc, There's no uh, doctor sat behind a desk talking to her. This is an angel direct from the heart of God, uh, breaking news indeed, bringing a remarkable revelation that, uh, that there's going to be an intervention from heaven on a grand scale and a baby will be born. And if you read the account of what the angel said to Mary, it's, there are three short packed sentences that, that, that tell us all we need to know about God's plan for the salvation of the world, God's destiny, if you like. And um, one is, you're going to have a baby boy and you'll call him Jesus. It wasn't left to Mary and Joseph to find the name. They didn't have to buy an A to Z and think, well, if it's a boy or if it's a girl, it was very clear. You'll have a baby boy and his name will be called Jesus. Secondly, he will be great. He will be called the Son of God, the Son of the Highest. And then thirdly, projecting right into the future, that he will rule forever and his kingdom will never end. And that's as plain and as straightforward as you'll get. There's no guesswork needed here. The angel delivers it as it is. He will be great. Think of Mary. It's easy to forget how revolutionary these words, this revelation must have been to her. You know, here she is, a 17-year-old girl engaged to Joseph. And the angel begins to talk to her about a supernatural birth, a virgin birth, giving birth to a baby boy. And his name will be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And one day he will rule the world these were simply staggering comments, staggering announcements that the angel is making about Jesus. You know, one of the most understated lines in the Bible, I think, is where it says, and Mary was troubled by these things. Wow. You know, the angel brings this whole raft of revelation to her, and it says, and Mary was troubled by these things. He shall be great. Everything about the child that you are about to bring into this world, Mary, everything, he will exude greatness. In the 1960s, uh, some of us will remember uh, a larger-than-life character called Muhammad Ali, uh, Cassius Clay, and uh, he was the heavyweight, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, of course, and uh, uh, he used to uh, swagger around and say of himself, I am the greatest. And when he was interviewed, that would be his strap line. I am the greatness. And, and when he would bring that statement, it was a personal statement of arrogance in many ways. I mean, he was un undoubtedly the greatest boxer that probably the world has known. And, uh, and he used to say of himself, I am the, great the greatest. But when the angel says of Jesus, he shall be great, this was not some personal statement of arrogance. This was a prophetic statement of his eminence, of his kingship, 
of, of greatness. I mean, before he's born, the angel tells Mary that he will be, tells about Mary about his life and his destiny and his accomplishments and it's all laid out. I mean, name me another child whose life and career and accomplishments and impact and destiny can be specifically and accurately described before the child is even conceived. What child has ever had all the details of their nature, their character, their life, their influence so clearly laid out before them before they're even born? Only Jesus. You see, parents only become aware of the potential of their child, the possible potential of their child when, you know, their child starts growing up and starts talking and in school reports and their observation skills and, and all these other things. And then even, even further on than that, into secondary school and beyond uh, before they can say with any certainty what type of life or what type of career that child is going to have uh, or how they, how they might impact society. But here, the angel, before he's, Jesus is, 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 is brought forth, the angel says, uh, he will be great. He shall be great. As I've said, the, also in chapter 1 of Luke is the reference to the birth of John the Baptist. And he was the cousin of Jesus, as you know. And, and when the angel appeared to Zachariah, and uh, it says, you, you know, he, he should call his name John and, and many will rejoice in his birth, it says. And then it says this, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. John the Baptist, he will be great in the sight of the Lord. That's quite a statement. Jesus reinforced that statement years later when he started his public ministry. And when he was asked about John, he says, you know, among those born of women, there's not been one greater than John the Baptist. He's a man with a special purpose, a special assignment, a special mission. And yet, when John the Baptist met Jesus, John the Baptist shrunk back. And do you remember his words? He says, I must decrease, but he must increase. In other words, there is no comparison in relation to greatness here. I've done my bit. I fulfilled my role. But he will go on to achieve so much more. Great, The greatest prophet that we've ever known. The greatest priest. The greatest king. Great in all the offices that we know that he's held. Greater than all who've gone before him. Greater than all who will come after him. Great in power. Great in wisdom. Great in authority. Jesus, pivotal to the plan of God, pivotal to the destiny of this world, uh, is Jesus. Uh, in the book of Hebrews and uh, in the very first chapter and very first verse, the writer to the Hebrews talks about that in times past God has spoken to us through spoken to our ancestors through the prophets in various ways through prophets and another means and then he says this however in these last days God has spoken to us directly through or in his son Jesus is pivotal Jesus is at the center of this redemptive rescue mission it's all about Jesus it's never been about us it's always been about Jesus, the Son of God. Uh, the angel says, Mary, the child that you are going to give birth to, he shall be great. You know, every woman believes that her firstborn is special. Mum, I hope you're listening to this recording today uh, and think the same. But seriously, every woman believes that the firstborn is, is, is special. And, but Mary's son is is in another league altogether. He is the long-awaited Messiah. He's the son of the living God. He's the ruler of the universe. He's the one who was and is and is to come. He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Greater, 
greater than death, greater than sin, greater than your past, greater than your fears, greater than your worries, greater than your needs. Uh, he shall be great. In 1969, the world watched in awe as a man named Neil Armstrong went up in a rocket and got out of the rocket when it landed on the moon. And he took steps, the first steps for man on the moon. And, and the world went crazy because what an accomplishment that we've sent a man up to the moon uh, and he's taken steps on the moon. But let me remind you that long before that, an even greater event took place. God walked on the earth. Yes, man went up to the moon, but an even greater event is that God walked on the earth in the person of Jesus. God broke into time and sent us Jesus to be the saviour of the world. He shall be great. You know, many will find, Mary would have found that, um, that announcement challenging on times. She would have treasured that word in her heart, no doubt. She would have been pondering it, he shall be great. But it would have been challenged on times. You know, when Jesus went into public ministry at the age of 30, he was ridiculed, he was abused, he was mocked, he was, there was all kinds of things said about him. He was rejected by his own folk and uh, think of the cross, think of Good Friday, think of all that she had to witness there at the cross and, and, and the, the sheer brutality of crucifixion. Uh, he shall be great. Really? And then Easter Sunday arrives. And this same Jesus in the cradle, on the cross, arises from the, from the tomb, comes back from the dead, uh, and rises again uh, and uh, weeks later ascends back to his father in a cloud and uh, and these words begin to resonate again he shall be great john the baptist we've talked about him already you know years later when he uh, became the the person to prepare the way for jesus come in he was quite a confrontational character as we understand and he had a he had a run-in with the king and uh, the king threw him into prison and of course he eventually was beheaded and um, whilst he's in prison and he's pondering things and Jesus the ministry of Jesus is continuing uh, and uh, John asks a question that goes right to the heart of Christmas for me and the question he asks you read about it in Matthew chapter 11 and John says are you the one that we should be looking for? Are you the one that the Old Testament has been speaking about? Are you the one? It's a question that will resonate maybe with you today as, you've, as you look in on this Advent series, as you reflect on what is Christmas all about? What is the reason for the season? Why the cards? Why the gifts? Why the celebration? Are you the one? Is Jesus really the saviour of the world? Is Jesus really the answer? Is he, is he the one to give me identity and give me destiny? Is he the one that, that can transform my life? Uh, is he the one that can forgive my past and give me a brand new start and a whole new future? The answer resoundingly is yes. Are you the one? It's all about Jesus. Your identity and your destiny is secure in him. The scriptures speak about him. The Holy Spirit has come to glorify him. He shall be great. I trust that he's great in your life today. He's the king of your life. He's the Lord of your life. And of course, the Bible goes on to tell us that he will reign forever. He will reign as the king of this universe. And this Advent season, we acknowledge that the baby in the cradle was the man on the cross, but is also the king on the throne. He shall be great. Enjoy Advent. May the Holy Spirit continue to speak to you. Bless you. Amen. 
Thank you, Paul. All I can say is thank God that Jesus came. And all through these weeks that lie ahead, counting down to Christmas, we can just rejoice. And as Linda said, read Luke chapter, chapter uh, the, Luke, the chapters in Luke uh, and be blessed uh, and just really get into the to grips of the fact that Jesus came, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords came mm. to our earth. He became human just like us. He became just human like us, but he had a purpose in mind. He had a destiny in mind, and that was to die on a cross. So Christmas, as much as we rejoice, is connected to Easter, and Easter is the fact why Jesus came to die on the cross, to forgive us of all our sins. If you want to know about anything that's been said today, please contact us on the email address that will be shown below, inquiries at smallthorn.org. And as I say, if you want to give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, if you've been challenged by some of the things that have been said today, please contact us again. If you want prayer, please contact us through that mechanism as well. And don't forget. And don't forget. The giving side of it, which will also be coming up, showing you the different ways in which you can give to the church during this Advent season. And if you want to give to Food Bank, please contact me and Linda if you want to give us a donation either financial or if you want to give us a donation to the hampers or anything that we never say no to anything as many of you know well, we just want to thank you for being with us today we pray that you will be blessed and that god will be with you and that you will really know that this advent season that god is with you some of you i know have gone through situations and circumstances in this year where you felt isolated you felt so alone well we just want to encourage you this morning God is with you. Jesus Christ loves you. Jesus Christ died for you. Jesus has died to set you free. And he loves you so much. Mm. He loves us so much. And the wonderful thing is, he may not be here now, but he's interceding and he's praying for us right now. When, when we're talking about him, he's praying for us. He's interceding for us. Yeah. He's continuing to love us. And he sent the Holy Spirit to be our comforter, to be our helper. What a wonderful saviour. We're going to finish our, our service this morning uh, with another song from Hillsong, King of Kings. That's what he is. That baby grows up, that grew up. That baby in the manger, he mm. grew up and at 33 years old, he died on a cross. But he rose again and when he comes again, and we as Christians believe he is coming again, he's coming not as a, a lamb, he's coming as the King of Kings. And a lot of laws. So we're going to listen to this song. And thank you very much for being with us this morning. And join God bless us on you. Zoom. And Zoom. <laughs> join us on Zoom. <laughs> and see you later. Take care. Bye bye. In the darkness, we were waiting without hope, without light. Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt Praise the
Okay.